going around right everywhere. Are, but specific area. Welcome back. You are still hanging up with us right here on Why in the Morning. And you can plug in on the hashtag Why in the Morning everywhere on all our social media platforms. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as at Y254 channel. And you can stream us on www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. Now, uh, joining me right at live in studio is a lady and uh, gentleman. We're going to take a look at uh, the current state of the political affairs in our country, including you know, uh, matters in security, and as well as, uh, of course, we saw uh, the end or the the, nom the vetting of uh, nom CS nominees that actually came to a close uh, last week on Saturday. We're also going to take a look at that and uh, many other issues as well. So joining me live in studio with us is, uh, on my immediate right, is uh, she's Violet. I'm going to let you introduce yourself before I get to our next guest. Um, thank you very much. Um, Valentine. Uh, I am a politician. I've served in several leadership positions. When I was in the University of Nairobi, I served as a Women's Students Welfare Association Publicity Chair. And uh, I also served as Miss University of Nairobi in the year 2019-2020. Um, yeah, that's just about the introduction. Great, quite a comprehensive one as well. <laughs> uh, good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Eric? Yes, uh, Edward. All right, Edward thank you. Sir, yeah, thank you. My name is Edward Gavega. I'm the current president of Bungalow Anainchi and also the CEO of Vision 2030 Youth. I'm happy to be here at Y254 KBC, the number one station in Kenya. Right. And looking forward to having a very uh, active and positive discussion with the current political scene and uh, ensure that the Mwanainchi is represented here fully. Thank right. You. Let's start off on that note, the Mwanainchi being represented fully. Yeah. Uh, we have seen um, uh, the president who, is, who actually came in and uh, he disbanded the special service unit. Of yeah. course, there's a lot of extrajudicial killings that happened that are still even happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Do you think that his regime is the one to clear it, to clear it out? Um, uh, it's going to be a, a game back and forth and then at the, at the end you're just going to still witness the same extrajudicial killings. Do you think his call to action is going to bring an end that I think uh, like we had this discussion before we went live on air we, uh, right. where I mentioned to you uh, now I can also talk to the public is that everything that you're seeing had a beginning so we have to look at it also at a historical perspective um, during the colonial period uh, we had uh, special units formed by the Queen's uh, government at that time and the governor who was ruling the country who were assassinating and taking out anybody who was against the colonial government, say Mau Mau's, anybody who brought some form of rebellion, even uh, Jomo Kenyatta, our first president, was a target of those uh, special units. Right. So therefore, we inherited uh, these units from the colonial master, and uh, inherently, we have followed up onto these units through Jomo Kenyatta's government, through Moi's regime, through Kibaki's regime, and now, finally, through Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta's regime. So right. it's a breath of fresh air and a renaissance because right. um, the law enforcement are people who are supposed to protect as provided for in the constitution. And never before has independence been given to the law enforcement. The law right. enforcement, they, are, they have a commission within uh, the constitution which is independent and the directorate of uh, investigation, criminal investigation is also an independent office. Right. that should not be used by politicians because even during the colonial times it was used for agitation against the colonial rule. So we are saying the constitution of Kenya provides for Mwanainti to have freedom of association, freedom of concerns, freedom of speech, and other freedoms provided for. So we in this matter, uh, moving forward, we support as Bungela Wanainti, right. the move by His Excellency William Samoy Ruto, and also the deputy uh, president, Rigade, who has been very vocal in right. him being a victim. Right. And we know even people like Dennis Itumbi. And these are just uh, the big people. But I right. can tell you uh, that unit has been misused. It's a unit that can fight al-Shabaab. It's a unit that can fight terrorists. It, it's a unit that is well equipped. But where politicians and people in governance misuse it, that is what William Ruto is against. 
so right. that our country can be free of fear All right, or true. intimidation. Absolutely. Yeah. Before we even get to the comeback of Meguna, Meguna, let me get back to you also, Violet, because I know you relate to that a lot. Do you feel like uh, the new uh, Valentine Beg your pardon? Do you feel like it's going to be, you know, a game changer when it comes to matter security? Um, well, um, I think that uh, you know the president has the people's uh, of the country's best interest at heart, right. and uh, I believe that uh, what. Um, Edward has said is, 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 is true. And uh, I, I think that, you know, separating politicians from some uh, of these uh, state corporations that we have is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So that we do not have politicians influencing things that they're not supposed to be influencing. They are supposed to be serving in a different um, positions and looking at the interest of the people of this nation and not the other way around. All right. Uh, the coming back of Meguna, Meguna, has it uh, some sort of brought, you know, a new flavor to the times even when it comes to matters, you know, the leadership of uh, the Luo Nyanza? Because I remember in an interview he mentioned that, you know, he's going to streamline the leadership of Luo Nyanza. And, uh, you know, having invited for the woman rep seat, do you feel like he has a point? He has a very good point. Um, the people of Luo Nyanza need him. Um, and what is going to happen is that it's going to take uh, quite um, some time for that to happen. But I believe that uh, Miguna Miguna is, is somebody who has uh, seen the gaps and he is ready to fill them uh, yeah. with, with, the, with whatever he's bringing. Uh, Luo Nyanza needs liberation. Uh, for, right. for quite a long time we've had, it's like a one-party state. Uh, the only reigning party that we've had there is, is ODM. And uh, when, uh, for example, when we, were, we had our nominations, for example, in Kisumu County, uh, we had uh, Raila Molodinga uh, do a six-piece call, uh, which I believe was not such a good thing, because I, I think that the people of uh, this country need to be given a chance to select and choose their own leaders, uh, not pinpointing leaders and forcing them on people, which is something that is making the leaders who have been elected in Lunyanza not to bring development to the people. Because at the end of the day, if you come from uh, a certain party, at the end of the day, if you, uh, if you have uh, the endorsement of, of, of Raila, then you are going, you're, you're going to, be, to, be, to be elected, which is something that should not uh, be happening. The people of uh, Luo Nyanza need uh, leadership that they have chosen for themselves. Uh, for example, right now, um, ODM uh, did not have any young person, any young person uh, take any seat. And, and that is quite unfortunate. And since we are talking today about uh, youth and politics, that is quite unfortunate because it was a party that was not uh, supporting the young people. So right. I believe uh, that Miguna... Do you feel, like, you feel like it never supported young people? I mean, it was clear. It was just clear Well, you know, you. I got ah. first-hand, first-hand experience from it because mm. I was vying uh, in April uh, nominations. I was vying uh, a, as, as Kisumu County woman rep. I did not, I was not able to afford the nomination fees, which was uh, 150,000. Uh -huh. I think in that, in such a situation, if uh, a party should be able to have uh, some waivers for young people, for women, so that we support them uh, in, 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 in leadership. Uh, and you find that uh, for that reason, uh, they, 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 elect, they selected their own person who was supposed to represent uh, uh, the party in the general elections. And, uh, you know, MDG, which is the party that I vied for, was in Azimio Laumoja. And you find that uh, we were not able to go to any rallies of Azimio Laumoja because we were considered as Madoadoa, right. uh, people who are against uh, Raila. While in the real sense, we were in the Azimio La Umoja coalition, we were supporting Baba, and uh, we, we walked through, throughout that county to look for votes for him. Yeah. Uh, Miguna Miguna, for example, endorsed me and uh, said that... Oh, he did? Yeah, he, he endorsed did. you? Yeah, he oh, did. Okay. <laughs> yes. So he posted me on his Twitter and, and asked the people of Kisumu to vote for me. Because yeah. the people of Kisumu truly need uh, that, that change of leadership. If you look at the, the, the person that I was vying against, this is somebody, uh, Ruth Odinga was a former deputy governor. She right. was a minister. These right. are people who have been in the leadership system, who are supposed to leave space right. for other people. So right. that is what uh, I believe Miguna is preaching, and that is what I believe Bonyanza needs.
Right. Uh, let me throw it back to you, yeah. uh, Edward. Yeah. Uh, even with his coming to, back to the country, mm -hmm. of course, uh, there's a lot of conversations around it. And, and I'm, I'm sure he's going to raise or literally shake up uh, the political scene in the Luo Nyanza. Yes. Do you feel like he's going to create that revolution that the Luo Nyanza needed? And if at all, is the environment going to be conducive for him? Because I know the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, has been, you know, he has been like the god of the Luo Nyanza, but then, you know, he didn't make it. Do you feel like uh, uh, Miguna Miguna has the right sound to take up that seat? I think uh, on the backdrop of an injustice, Miguna Miguna is a Kenyan citizen and it has taken him four years to just get that recognition as a Kenyan. Right. And uh, so he comes with a lot of uh, energy. Right. And uh, this energy will be directed towards uh, one uh, Raila Molodinga and his enchilon. Because Miguna has been able to be consistent with his intentions, with his fight for justice, especially of the Luo Nyanza. And he was doing it every other day on social media, and that's how powerful social media can be. All right, yeah. And he was active in Kenyan politics until the end. And right. he said, Baba will not be the president. And right. his prophecy has come to pass. Right. Now, he also prophesied that he'll come back to Kenya. And he did come back to Kenya on the 20th, on the Mashuja day, and entered Kenya like a Mashuja. And indeed, that has propelled him, despite what people may think, in the political divide or maybe in the side of Azimio, it has really propelled him among the young people. Because him and William Ruto and the current government, you can see they have all come from a struggle and a bitter fight right. with uh, the opposition leader and the former president Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. All right, yeah. And therefore, because of that, and they defeated them in the battlefield, you know, when you win a battle and a war in the field and your, 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 your soldiers are slaughtered, you have nowhere to speak. And even me, like a president of Bungela Wanainchi, right. the, the elected, the sworn-in president of Bungela Wanainchi, was very surprised to see that Raila Odinga came to Bungela Wanainchi to meet Bungela Wanainchi opposition people right. okay. without including the president of Bungela Wanainchi. Right. I, Edward Gizaiga, worked for Raila Odinga. Uh -huh. I was an advisor for Raila Odinga before. But the problem, like my sister raised, is that no matter how hard you try to help, you cannot because there's so many vested interests. Right. And that is why we are saying for Miguna to come, it is a breath of fresh air for Bungela Wanainchi right. because this is someone who we are going to invite to Bungela Wanainchi. And we're also going to write to the political, uh, political registrar office All right. yeah. to say that Bungela Wanainchi is an independent, non-political, non-partisan organization and institution. Right. And therefore, it has to be kept independent. It is the people's parliament, parliament yeah. not a political party. Yeah. Right. So we reject any move. We hear even Kalonzo Musioka is making moves to come to Bungela Wanainchi. Yes. If they do not pass through the correct elected Bungela Wanainchi leadership, we are going to reject it. And right. this is actually a breach of the constitution where the opposition has been given opposition leadership. They have minority right. in the parliament. They have right. majority in Nairobi County. Right. So for them to come and interfere with the mindset and the brains of young people, Waze, Wabungela Wanainchi, Wamama Wabungela Wanainchi, we right. are not going to accept because that is bringing political partisanship into right. a neutral organization like Bungela Wanainchi that right. fights not for a political party right. or a political individual, but right. for the Mwanainchi. Mwanainchi right. And therefore right. we are saying and we are calling on the government to assist Bungela Wanainchi yeah. to stop Bungela Wanainchi being a place where politicians can come you know. and, and try and bring divisions. Division, yeah. Bungela Wanainchi has got all the tribes in Kenya. Right. Last time we were even shocked. We looked at the list of the people who, was, who, who, who came with the Raila Amolo Odinga. Uh -huh. We can see all of them were from one region. Right. We start with Babu Owino. Right. We go to Jalango. Right. right? Exactly. You uh -huh. see, 
And these are leaders who came there. Where are the other, other leaders uh, from other parts of the country? All so right. therefore, Bungelo Anainchi is not a place for, for political parties. It is right. a place for us. Like now, I can give you an example. All right. We are the only civil society, among others, who have petitioned parliament on the Saudi Arabia issue. Right. Just yesterday, the BBC did an interview of a website or an application that Google has allowed Right. Where they are trading and trading with women, African women, like it's a dating site. Right. Where men come and say they want that one. That is yeah. slavery. Right. That is what Bungela Wananchi is supposed to be fighting for. Not fighting for political survival for others. Right. We have many issues. We want to sit down with government politely without uh, castigating them. This government has only been there 34 days. Right. So Bungela Wananchi is not part of the threats. Right. that have been thrown to the government and insults. Those are people that belong to a political party, right. one political side, and we are not going to accept that to continue as Bungalow 90 because we believe the Mwananchi requires right now fertilizer, seeds in the right. machinani. There's drugs. The water water yeah. people require to be given licenses, training right. yeah, for road safety. Right, the women need their rights, their political rights. Like I was telling my sister, start right. now right. because this is the moment of renaissance in this country right. when the new takes over from the old, and we are ready as Bungalow 90 to take over the mantle from the right. old regime to a new regime. And we are happy that the government of the day is conscious about this matter. Exactly. And uh, v Valentine had mentioned that, you know, uh, the current leadership is actually being met by a little bit of resistance. I remember there was a time uh, uh, President uh, uh, Ruto visited uh, the Lonyanza region and actually some of the leaders that turned up were actually just quite a handful. Mm. Uh, is it because they are suffering from the trauma that, you know, their leader did not win or maybe they are angry? Um, am I, maybe it's, cause, it's because of lack of unity? among the leaders in that area? Um, of course, uh, you know, William Ruto, like I said, uh, my sister said here, thank you very much. She mentioned that it's taken a long time of the people of Luonyanza to accept that uh, the presidency went. And uh, it's with William Ruto. And William Ruto has made pledges for Luonyanza, like any other part of the nation, right. to provide for them the services that they require and has also opened his arms to work with the leaders of these areas. Right. So it is normal reaction because it's an opposition area where you'll hear a bit of noise. But yeah. I do hope and pray that uh, the Luos and the young men and the young women will now see this as an opportunity to reorganize, re-strategize, so that come 2027, we can have new leaders, and not just in Luonyanza, even in my area where I come from, Mount Kenya. Right. We want to ensure that any dynastic, any linkages of lineage, right. you know, leadership in Africa has suffered because of lineage. Lineage. Your, your father was someone, so you have the right. Or your sister is someone, so you have the right. right. So I believe that Luonyanza has reached a moment. And... A moment is here today, so it presents to them to work with the current government. Like you can see the ICT minister, Owalo, uh, one of the prominent leaders who stood with uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa, right. and, and his prophecy also came to pass. So it's time that the leadership of Luo Nyanza, and we were very embarrassed and shocked that uh, the, the governor of, Lu, uh, of uh, Homa Bay would not be part of that meeting. It's not right. nationalist. Right. It is really partisan. And that partisan politics should end. Let it be in parliament when you're debating and when you're passing policy. But let it not drop into the Mwanainchi. Right. Because the Mwanainchi in Luo Nyanza is the same one in, in, in Karatina, in, uh, in Mombasa, struggling to earn a living, struggling how they're going to pay their rent and other issues of life, like health. Right. And this is what we want like the opposition parties to do. Don't fight the government for the sake of fighting and, and blackmailing and right. propaganda. Fight right. the government in issues that they have done wrong or right. which their policies have not implemented. Right. Yes. 
Uh, let me come back to you, Valentine. Do you feel like uh, the current uh, regime has uh, favored a lot of women? And uh, in as much as when it comes to matters empowerment, uh, women are fully represented from where you sit and your experience uh, since the uh, in, in, in current government came in. Do you feel like it has created that sort of like given women more power? You know, it has made them, it has not disenfranchised them as compared to even like the previous regime. Um, well, uh, if we look at, uh, if we compare what is happening now in terms to, in terms with uh, women empowerment and uh, what was happening, let me say, 20 years ago, I think uh, Africa and Kenya has really improved a lot when it comes to women empowerment. Uh, let's take, for example, the seat that I was uh, running for, uh, the woman <laughs> county representative position. This is a position that was uh, created as a result of affirmative action, uh, which means that this is a position that is supposed to empower women. I got it very easy for me because I was not running against any man, which made it a little bit uh, more easier because we know men are more, uh, you know, financially stable and all of that uh, when it comes to uh, politics. Uh, so uh, as, a, as a country, we are trying, but we are not there yet because even if you look at the parliament, uh, the, the two-third gender rule, we still have to do a lot of nominations to get there. When we look at where people are just uh, voting uh, in the August elections, we didn't uh, meet the two-third gender rule. They had to do the nominations and all of that. So we still need to do uh, a lot more work. And another thing is that uh, these organizations that we have that are supporting women in politics, um, they also need to create spaces uh, for young women in politics. Because if you look at my case, uh, of course, uh, we were running uh, all women. We were all women. But you find that I was running against uh, big fish, uh, like you said. Now, if we had uh, organizations that came in, uh, if I'd had organizations that came in to support me, then I believe I would have, I would have taken the seat. Uh, but you find that um, a lot of uh, young women, especially in, uh, in, 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 in this country, uh, we do not have enough empowerment. It's still a lot of work uh, that needs uh, to be done. And just to add on to what he was saying, um, you know, the ground is still hostile in Luanyanza uh, when it comes to uh, what uh, the new regime that we have. Uh, right. People are still not coming to terms, uh, like like I said before, uh, with the fact that we have a new president who is uh, not the president that the people of Lunyans are expected. No. Now, uh, I like what the crop of leaders, some leaders are doing in Lunyans. If you talk about Miguna Miguna, we also have several other leaders from Kisumu, like Ranguma, Outa, and other leaders who are trying it to, to, to push uh, the new agenda so that we have change uh, in that in that in that region of this country so that we have uh, we do away with the dynasties uh, like you were saying I mean uh, the dynasty thing is so bad uh, that if you look at uh, the people who went to who were nominated to Iala the other time you find that they are daughters of who is who sons of who is who if you look at the county assemblies of Kisumu in Kisumu County we have someone from Busia County representing the people of Kisumu. It's like, you know, and I'm there, there were right. several youths who vied, who could have been nominated. But right. these people are not being given a chance. People right. are being taken from, uh, you know, relatives of who is who. So right. that is, those are the things that uh, we need to do away with. Those are the things that uh, uh, very many leaders uh, in, in Luanyanza are, are coming up uh, to fight against. Because if we don't fight against it, then we are not going to have development. We keep on recycling leaders recycling leaders all the time. Um, for example, me, uh, you know, leaders that we have, the governors in Luanyanza, these are people that I started hearing about uh, when I was still very young. These are people who, are, who started politics before I was born. And these are things that need to change. So right. we are not saying that we do away with them uh, fully. We are saying that even if they are there, we also need to have a mixture of new blood, a mixture of fresh minds, uh, a mixture of, of new ideas uh, that we can have so that we have development in, in, in Luanyanza. Great. Now let's switch gears a little bit, Edward. Um, the, um, I said the voting of the nominated CSS came to a close on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, previously, uh, the most predominant issue was we had Dametika Linturi who had, you know, 
assault allegations that previously uh, they have been dropped. We also had Aisha Juma who was facing graft allegations as well. And then when the charges were, were, were dropped from both parties, it raised a lot of eyebrows and a lot of question marks even to uh, still the reigning you know, D DPP, uh, Nudin Haji. Do you feel like it was the right move to actually do that? And uh, does it have any meaning as well in terms of even uh, the integrity of uh, our current leaders as well moving forward from now on that we have the new regime? Okay, um, justice delayed is justice denied. And of course, uh, I don't know why today we're coming from this uh, backdrop of again going back to the past uh, regime. And you can clearly see there was a witch hunt um, of these politicians which was played out in, in the media and in the courts of law where because Aisha Jumwa went against the supposedly powers that uh, put her in there, her political party at that moment, uh, she was then blackmailed and, uh, you know, set aside for destruction, political assassination, and many others as well. So it clearly, you, if, if you know tomorrow you're going for an interview, and you know very well that the case that was brought before the courts of law was not justified, did not have evidence, that was supposed to be there. You go to the DPP and you apply, and you tell the DPP, this, I'm going, you know, this, this has to be checked into it, and the DPP has the power as an independent office, and, and I like the way the DPP is also now currently operating, because he's operating under independent office. The DPP was number one in saying the way the DCI carried out its investigations was shoddy. And you remember the big fight between Nodin Haji and uh, Kenoti, former DCI leader. Yeah. All the time, fighting because of evidence in court. They are told to bring evidence. The case comes without evidence. You hear again, DCI is going to court without the DPP. Those push and shove. But uh, once again, uh, the people who were, de were being denied justice that time, even the DPP, the heavy hand of the executive, the internal minister, uh, security, the president, state house, what, deep state, what, all that was denying uh, the voice to the DPP's office. So the DPP's office was being strangled under all this pressure. But right. now, because the regime has changed and a friendlier regime has come in, because even that regime that is there today was in the same struggle the DPP was in. So you can see it's not favorism, it's just justice has been served. Right. However, some of the cases are being reviewed. Uh, they have not all been uh, dropped. Uh, you can even see for the deputy president, it was withdrawn because there was insufficient evidence. Right. And there were trumped up charges because you have the, the DCI investigating, you have the police, then you have the judges who are being threatened, you remember? Uh, William Samoy Ruto, one of his pledges was to uh, add the court, uh, court of Appeal judges who had been denied by the previous regime. I think the right. previous regime was just in bad books with everybody. Right. You know, and anybody, unfortunately, including Raila Amol Odinga, was associated with it. So you can see how things are happening today because this current regime is now putting into place the injustices. The, 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 like my sister was saying, the things that had happened in the past that were anti, like to bring down the Mwanainchi, to ensure the youth don't grow in politics. I remember right. at once uh, His Excellency Uru Kenyatta coming on television and saying the youth knew are easy. He right. insulted the youth. And the same youth in that bandwagon are the ones who voted, voted for him. For him yeah. So it's a breath of fresh air. We have a hustler government. We believe that the opportunity is there for young people now, like my sister, myself, and many others, to take the mantles of leadership in whatever level they are in, in the right. community level, in, uh, in wherever they are, and not right. to be misused by the politicians. All right. Um, on page number four of the People Daily, I'll just highlight for you, there's a, a story where yesterday we saw the Deputy President Rigadi Gashago actually calling uh, Kalonzo, Waipa Party Leader Kalonzo Msioko on board, and he, he, he literally is like the current representation of uh, the Kamba community. And uh, he said that, you know, uh, he wanted to take his meal and uh, 
part of the leadership so that in the, in the time to liberate part of the negative politics that have been happening in that area. And he asked the people of Kambani to guide the leader in the correct political direction, saying that Kambani was so much in need of government support and should have no business in opposition. Do you think mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a positive move that's also going to actually bring the, 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 the Kamba community on board and as much as when it comes to leadership and yes. politics is fully represented? Most definitely. Um, yeah. Kambas, like uh, the Wavin Ndeti, the governor of uh, Machakos, uh, the governor Mutula, and the governor uh, Malome, have all said they are going to work with the current regime. And this is why they are working with them because of development, of because election and political uh, competition is only once, a year, once in five years. So now we just have to focus on positivity. So indeed it is a positive move. But again, uh, you had uh, uh, Deputy President Gashagwa saying that he's not very sure because after that yesterday in the, in the church service, uh, yeah. what he mentioned, he said um, Kalonzo Mosioka came for the Mashujade and they thought they were now, you know, yeah. uh, together, together right. or talking or discussions are ongoing in terms of development, in terms of the people. Right. But shockingly to see him yesterday in Homer Bay again, was it? Yes, and yeah. uh, saying that uh, they are going to form a shadow cabinet, they are going to fight the government, opposition and again. opposition, yeah. and the, the Kalonzo is there. So you wonder, this early, Mr. Kalonzo, you're already building politics into, into a government that's 34 days old, right? And we've also heard as Bungelo Anainchi that you're planning to come to Bungelo Anainchi, yani illegally, yani to hold an illegal procession where Mwanainchi is seated trying to, to figure out how they are going to sort the issues of unemployment, where we are trying to figure out the issues of hunger and drought. You know, Bungela Mwanainchi is a national organization that is in all 47 counties. Right. And therefore, when politicians begin to start taking advantage of our sittings, because, you know, Bungela Mwanainchi is an active uh, organization that is provided for in the Constitution, in the rights to participation, in the rights to public participation, in the rights to association, and others. So we are enshrined within the constitution of Kenya, and we are non-partisan. So we are pleading with our elders, please yeah. stay away from Bungelo Anainchi. You have your political parties where you can take your issues. You have your elected leaders who are in parliament, who are in the Senate, who can represent your issues. But do not tamper with the peace and, 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 and sustainability of Bungelo Anainchi because that is the people's parliament, right. not the national parliament and not a political party's playground. Right. Valentine, do you feel like, you know, he's afraid to betray Baba since, you know, he's been strongly affiliated? I remember even before we went to election, he had also had talks with, uh, you know, the, the, the Kenya Kwanzaa leadership system, but he ended up again choosing that different direction, which literally didn't lead him to come to government as well. Do you feel like he's afraid to uh, betray Baba? Well, I think he could be afraid uh, because uh, even where I come from, it is politically correct to agree with everything that Baba says. It is politically mm -hmm. correct to support everything that he does. It is politically correct to, you know, do his, uh, you know, uh, do uh, according to what he says. Uh, but I also think that uh, I appreciate his position. If he wants to be in the position in the opposition team, I think we need a very strong opposition that can oversight the existing uh, government. So if we can have him on that other side, uh, oversighting in a way that is right, in a way that is not, uh, you know, uh, leaning on to their own personal interest, in a way that is considering the mwananchi, the common mwananchi, then it is just okay uh, for him to be on that side and give a very strong oversight uh, so that uh, the government can do its best. You know, uh, we can also just not uh, leave the government relaxed. Uh, they need those noises. They need uh, a lot of those um, opposition so that they can keep uh, doing uh, good work and working for the Monanchi. So uh, for me, um, it's okay. Whatever uh, side chooses, uh, that's just okay. As long as they consider the interest 
of the people and not their own personal interests. The problem with uh, several leaders in this country is uh, we do most things uh, just uh, to satisfy uh, uh, our own interest, which is something that is not supposed to be happening. A leader is supposed to represent the interest of the people that they are representing. Uh, so uh, let them stay in opposition and op oversight, no problem. All right, in addition to that, uh uh, the president issued a directive to have a new uh, appointment of IEBC bosses and we saw uh, yesterday still Kalonzo Musioka condemning it saying that he should involve uh, Azimio leaders to form that government, that, 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 that committee as well. In as much as you know our Fuller Chibukati is exiting, uh, how are they actually going to you know, come on board since you know, they're meeting, since they're also repelling again as you know, the president's directive and he is the president, he is the one to decide you know, yes. how everything goes and they're already you know, uh, meeting it with a lot of resistance. How are they going to actually you know, package themselves to a point they're going to calm down, sit down and then have a conversation with the president and say yes now, please include us. Yes. I think you've already answered that question because that is how they are supposed to do it. Um, well, the president is the president and he's going to make several decisions without, uh, you know, having to involve the opposition team. And uh, I think that uh, the, the, the team in opposition should look at the correct way to handle these things. If they feel that, uh, you know, uh, showing a lot of resistance and making a lot of noise is going to help them, then they can go that direction. But then again, I believe that, uh, you know, the president is also against uh, the handshake government. So I believe that they should go about it the mature way and, yeah. uh, and, and try to uh, talk the president into uh, involving them. But that is not really necessary, yeah? Because um, if it's the president's duty to appoint IEBC official, then we let him do that. Um, if we come next elections, uh, I'm just hoping that we are going to still have credible elections with uh, no um, hitches of uh, stealing votes and, and, and all of that. But in the meantime, like I said, let them do what they can do. Uh, let them do what they feel is right, but they should do it um, the right way. Edward, what do you think is the formula they can use to come on board? Because they're meeting it with a lot of resistance and it seems like it's going to take them quite a long time before they come to terms that, you know, he is Ruto and he is the president. If you were to help them, what would you advise them to do so that they become part and parcel of this current government? I don't think there's any advice you would give them because they have already made a predetermination that they want to spoil anything, you know? And uh, I want to air my sentiments also in the IBC matter. Uh, obviously, even the entire IBC after the chairman leaves should be, should be taken out all of it. We don't want any new IBC. I mean, we don't want the current. All of them should just go. And we choose new ones. Because even the four who ran to Serena during the bombers time, yeah. clearly, if you read, you saw the full uh, report by the, the Supreme Court. Supreme Court yeah. I mean, they should be in jail. There. You know, that was subverting the will of the people yeah. and uh, trying to bring a coup d'etat right. through the back door. So right. you can clearly see that the IBC requires reforms and the president is within his purview and within his power and mandate to call for that. However, right. if you want to have constructive a dialogue, that is not the way to go about it. Right. You don't go to television, you don't go to media and make a statement on the roadside. That was very low of Kalonzo Musioka because he, he knows where he can get his excellency. He's at State House. He knows right. he has a chief of staff. He right. knows he has a staff that he has employed, State House controller. People that Kalonzo Musioka can reach out to if he wants a meeting with the president so that they can begin this discussion. Right. And once again, I say this roadside discussions, this interference with Mwanainchi, trying to bring political instability, trying to bring hostility at a moment when we are supposed to focus on economic regrowth and economic renaissance, like bringing back the economy back to its feet. Not forgetting that we had COVID-19. Right? So when is these leaders from uh, Kalonzo and the others going to bring a debate. If Raila Odinga or Kalonzo is coming to Bungelo Anainchi to meet us, 
to tell us that this is our this is our socio economic program. This is what we wanted to implement there. So here it is to you. We want you to start looking at it. But they are not bringing that. They are making us turn out to be an opposition of government. Yet we are the same people who are asking government. We want to be part of you, like what Kalonzo is doing. He's saying we want to be part of the process. And yet at the same time, he's throwing stones to the government. Right. So this is a high level of hypocrisy. And we as young leaders, and I believe my sister is one of them, and many out there that we are talking to today, kindly run away from those leaders and stay away from them. Look at leaders, focus on which minister is coming in next. Focus on your career. Focus on the things that really matter to your life so that you can find a solution to your problems as the government of the day works to bring solutions to you. And I want to echo the issue of opposition. Opposition is there to oversight government. The same opposition that was there during a jubilee is the same opposition that gave a handshake to the national to, to the regime that was that we were losing 820 billion per year in corruption. Right? All right. So the same regime that brought us the BBIs, the same regime that brought us all these uh, machinations. Yet the focus on the economy was pushed aside. The focus on the drought. If the former regime, which was the handshake regime, focused on the drought because the signs were there. We were being told there was no rain for the next two, three years. We would not yeah. be suffering this way. Yeah. And that is why you see the current government is thinking about building 100 dams. People are laughing about it and saying it's not possible. It right. is very possible because you will take out the money from uh, infrastructure that does not require uh, high labor, like All roads right. All right. and other high expensive infrastructures, which they use a lot of machinery, but bring infrastructure that will include high human resource base so that it employs more people and has more effect, like a dam. If we have dams in Turukana, we can do irrigation and those people will not need food aid, right? All right. So yeah. we're saying, Bungela Wanainchi, we're not just saying that we're supporting the government. No, we are saying we are going to hold them accountable to what they promised us. But we're not going to hold them accountable because an opposition party or another ulterior motive is being planted within the youth to bring uh, revolt against the government. All right. And uh, I remember uh, the Deputy President Regali Gashago also mentioned that, you know, uh, he felt that, you know, uh, uh, the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, used around 50 billion Kenyan shillings to pump into his campaign, to pump into the BBI that failed. And then also there was another 200 billion that was also pumped into, you know, the whole campaign, the Azmil campaign. And now uh, the, there's no money in government at all. And yesterday we saw the president saying that, you know, everybody must pay tax. Do you feel like, you know, we are going to actually pay for the evils that were done by the previous regime that is in another language, no, if you were no, to no, say? No, 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 I mean, us as Bungela 90 are watching very close. Right. And we know that uh, the former regime is very guilty of a lot of corruption and a lot of misuse. And anywhere those, those cases come up, we will, we will be there to support the Mwanainchi against any actions taken against the former regime because it was full of impunity. It, it ran the, the, the government with a hard hand and yet it was also involved in many things that were illegal. Right. So therefore, we as the Mwanainchi say that we are not going to bear the burden. Afadali warudishe pesa ili waliiba. Diyo hapo tutawasamea. We can only forgive those who stole if they return that money to the coffers so right. that we as Wanainchi don't have to suffer. Right. And the issue about the tax, indeed right now, I remember when uh, William Samoy Ruto came in, he had a meeting. The first, first meetings was with KRA. And KRA's Director General Mboro promised and assured that they are going to change the regime of enforcement. Because you see, KRA is supposed not to be an authority. It's supposed to be a service. It's supposed to be Kenya Revenue Services. It right. is offering you a service. When it's collecting tax, it is not its tax. It's right. not its money. It's your money. Absolutely. So, there's a, like Kenya Police Service, they are uh, utumishi kwa wote. 
So KRA's uh, director general, actually, I apl uh, applaud him for that, uh, which is a change of policy. And you can see even the customer service week uh, recently. Right. KRA was in the forefront of saying that they are going to sit down with people and talk to them of the importance of paying that tax. tax yeah. But what we want to tell the current regime is please manage those resources that are collected by KRA properly. And KRA also keep track of the money that you're collecting. We hear that there are some loopholes also in KRA where money is lost that has been collected. We are talking about Central Bank of Kenya. We are asking the current uh, 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 governor of Central Bank to come with initiatives that will enable the hustler and the Mwanainchi to, to grow. For example, look at the, the digital lenders. These digital lenders have taken advantage of the Mwanainchi. You borrowed 500 shillings, they are now telling you to pay 10,000 shillings. Yeah. Under you, Governor of Central Bank, this has happened. Okay. So we are saying because we do understand the regime that was there before was very uh, dark and black and dark and was very hard. So maybe the governor at that time, he didn't have the powers to uh, put policies that favor the Mwanainchi. We are calling on that. And the other major issue that we want to call upon, because I know time is moving very fast with this new regime, right. is the issue of our women in Saudi Arabia. Right. We know very well that in Saudi Arabia, our women, just the other day we were at the airport to receive the body of Margaret Warogoro, right. who Mike Governor Sonko, whom we want to thank a lot, for he raised the, 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 the transport from there, all the bills that were being charged there, and he brought the body of the deceased up to here. Right. But we want to ask the government to investigate the agents, especially even that one case of Margaret Warogoro. Because that one case will show the rot and the corruption that has been there in the Labour Ministry, in the National Employment Authority. Even to an extent, but we're not blaming the Secretary General of Kotu, whom we respect because he's fighting also for these girls, but he also sits in the, in the governing council of, of the ILO, International Labour Organization. And the International Labour Organization in 2011 passed an Article 189 for the recognition of domestic workers as workers as any worker globally. We are asking the government of Kenya to address the plight by ratifying and domesticating Article 189 of the International Labour Organization or labour laws so that our women, our girls who are going to Saudi Arabia can avoid going into traps of slavery, going into traps of prostitution and sexual abuse and, and sex trade that we can even see, currently we've seen even in Google, uh, there's apps in Google ads that are selling the selling of people, of our domestic workers. Right. But at the same time, we also want to say that the government has to continue working with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia because right. the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has also provided for the much-needed employment right. of all cadre, right. all job descriptions of Kenyans. Of Kenyans right. We yeah. hear even the other day there is an engineer right. who's, who's engineering the, the underground system, right. who's in charge in Saudi Arabia, in right. Riyadh. Right. So we do also want to take recognition of our international treaties and our international... We're not fighting any kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We're there to work with them because they're the third in, uh, in uh, remissions, like foreign uh, remissions that come from uh, diaspora. And right. that is commendable. Right. Yeah. Uh, your last and final remarks, uh, Valentine, as we come to a close. Uh, going way forward, what should we look up to, even from even an, an individual leadership perspective as well? Uh, well, I'd just like to say that, uh, you know, Africa's biggest wealth is in the power of its youth. Uh, you realize that uh, young people form 75% of the population um, in this country. Uh, we form the majority and uh, we are 
the excluded majority. Yeah, young people uh, are only being misused. Uh, they're only being uh, used to throw stones. Uh, during uh, politics, you'll hear a lot of vijana tibim, vijana telala. Uh, during politics, you'll hear a lot of older leaders uh, just using these um, young people as a bridge to get to where they want to get uh, while leaving them behind and actually not doing anything later uh, to support or to deliver to them. Uh, like for example, uh, when uh, we had uh, the Azumiyo rally in Kisumu uh, sometime this year. Um, up, we have a minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, we had a lot of leaders uh, coming up in front and, and, you know, they always started their conversations with Vijana Tibim, Vijana Telala, because right. a lot of these rallies are attended by young people. Yeah. Now, when a young person comes up to the stage to speak up, then they are not even being given an opportunity to right. speak. Uh -huh. uh, what does that tell you? It tells you that young people are being used, uh, we are being misled, and right. if we do not stand up for ourselves, if we do not come out and fight for these positions, just like others are fighting for them for themselves, right. mm -hmm. if we do not come out and also secure uh, the leadership positions, get a seat at the table, then we are going nowhere as a country. If you look at the CSS who are selected, I don't see any youth. Uh, there are still going to be several positions, and I promise you that there are going to be very few youths, and that is a very sad state of affairs. If you look at other countries, um, they have young people leading them, and they have very strong people who are actually delivering. Uh, young people have brilliant minds. We have brilliant ideas that we are willing to, to bring onto the table and to, and to bring them to life and to deliver to the people. So mine is just to be uh, an inspiration to several young people out there. I didn't tell you, but I am 22 years of age. Oh, okay. And this should be a plea to all the young people there who want to come out for several, several positions of leadership to come out and vie. Come out and fight for these positions. Come out and speak up. Come out and speak on issues that affect you so that we make sure that in this uh, government that we have, we are considered, we are cared about, and we have our interests um, delivered. Thank you. Uh, your final remarks, yes, Edward. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity once again. Uh, we don't take it for granted. Um, reaching out to the audience and the public out there. Uh, in Bungalow 90, we're inviting all Bungalow 90s to be ready. We are going to have a tour around the country to all Bungalow 90 chapters. And we are going to launch our charter very soon. Uh, this charter is the charter that will be used uh, nationally by all Bungalow 90 so that when they want to have their elections, when they want to put in place their county leadership, their ward leadership, their sub-county leadership, they can use the charter to guide them. And also we want to say that uh, Bungalow Nainchi is at the forefront uh, working with the county assemblies because we do know from the past uh, uh, happenings is that uh, public participation has been a mirad to many Wanainchi. And because of perhaps some of the bills and some of the acts that have been passed uh, may not be uh, Mwananchi friendly or have hidden agendas. And therefore, they are not brought out into the public. You just hear there was a public participation, but uh, there is none. So we are going to work with a young, um, they are called K Kenya Young uh, Members of County Assembly Association and Kenya Young Parliamentarians Association. We're also going to work with the speakers of uh, county assemblies um, so that we can ensure that Bungalow 90 now moves a step higher. Apart from just being the normal people who are gathering in the corners, in the gardens, in the parks around uh, the nation, can also now begin to pass uh, influential um, public interest matters which can start at that Bungalow 90 level to be taken on to the county assembly and subsequently to the national level and also to the Senate. So right. that the laws that are only being passed are not being passed by interest groups alone. For example, if it's pharmaceutical companies, when they want law to be passed for their favor, they look for lobbies, they look for people and they pass them. Now we as Wanainchi have recognized that secret. And in Bungila Wanainchi we will be in the forefront, not making noise, but objectively working towards the recognition of our dreams and aspirations. And I'm very proud of my sister, and we want to tell her to join Bungalow 90 and start the Women's League. Because right now in Bungalow 90, we've opened up Bungalow 90 for Women's League. 
I know for a very long time, we had only us male uh, Bungalow 90 leaders who have been there. And in every, even us, we have a woman rep in our Bungalow 90 who's going to be accompanying me and also the other leaders so that we ensure that the women's league, especially the young women, right. we want to see your visions and your aspirations and your, and your right to participation explored to the limit. Because at 22 years old, as she has said, and I know right. we're giving her a lot of attention, she right. deserves William Ruto, His Excellency the President, I'm talking to you, Gashagwa. As your government comes into place, consider a young lady like this, who's only 22 years of age, got 80,000 votes as woman rep in uh, Kisumu County. Look for what she can do, sir, and I'm sure she can help the women in Kisumu County, the women in Luanyanza, and many others across the country to be a good example. And we pray that the youth stay away from alcohol, stay away from drug abuse, prostitution, and things that will put you in danger. Be wise, start a business, join a circle, join a CBO, join a self-help group. Don't worry about the harsh times we have now of economy. It's no more going, it's a pendulum. It goes left and it goes right. So now we are facing the right side of drought, right side of decline, the right side of everything that of lack. But soon and very soon, because we have a God in heaven, all we're right. going to see the rains come back. We're going to see our economy fruition. But that will come also if you put hard work into it as young people. And right. participate and hold your leaders accountable. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Edward Gidaiga, President of Bungalow Nainchi, for your time and your sentiments as well and remarks. And also, uh, Valentine Atieno Onyango, we also wish you the best of luck as you take upon this journey. I know it's tough and you're young, so we wish you the very best. Thank we'll you. be rooting out for you. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. And just to let you know that the views expressed in this discussion do not exactly represent the views of Y254 TV, but individual views of our guests right here just to let you know and as we take a break right about now ensure that you continue to chat with us on the hashtag why in the morning everyone all our social media platforms and my sister brian sakwana we take a break we'll be back with the mcm segment right here don't change the channel <laughs>